a girl is on a Ferris wheel, and uh, I guess we'll assume it's rotating in this direction. We want to find the uh, normal force acting on the girl, or we can call it the total force acting on the girl um, from her chair, I suppose, inside the Ferris wheel. And we want to do it in uh, three locations. We'll do it at the top of the circle, we'll do it at the bottom of the circle, and then maybe at the side of the circle here. Now, obviously, this is a vertical circle, so the two equations we want immediately in a vertical circle is the centripetal force and the force of gravity. So force centripetal would then equal the her mass multiplied by the velocity squared divided by the radius. And that's going to equal 56 newtons. Next thing we need is the force of gravity acting on the girl. So force of gravity is just her mass multiplied by 9.8. And that'll equal 441 newtons. Now we just need to uh, consider the tension force, kind of like from our vertical circle that we've dealt with before. And uh, we'll just translate that into the force of her chair on her. Okay, let's look at the bottom first. Okay, the, the chair has to push her into the center of the circle because it is a force centripetal. But the gravity is opposing that. So she's going to feel like she's being pushed this direction. Okay, but gravity is opposing that. So her chair has got to push on her with a larger force to keep her going into the center of the circle. Okay, so what she's going to feel here at this location, we'll say the force acting on the girl, is then going to be equal to force centripetal plus force gravity. So then I'll just take 4, or that would be the 56, plus 441. Okay, and that's going to equal 497 newtons. Okay, now at the top, some of her gravity is going to be pointing down this way. And it's going to be helping her to stay in the circle already. So she's going to feel less force on her because of this chair. So at the top, the force acting on the girl is going to equal force of gravity minus force centripetal. So I'll take the 441, and I'll subtract 56. And that's going to be 385 newtons. So again, the chair won't have to put as much force on it because the gravity is helping in the situation. Okay. But only 56 newtons is needed to make her go in a circle. So she's going to feel like she weighs 385 newtons. Now at the side, we are going to have a force pointing in this way, and that'll be like the friction between herself and the chair, making her go in this direction here. Okay, and uh, that'll be 56 okay, newtons. And then she's going to feel her entire weight this way as her normal force of 441 newtons. Okay. And uh, there, therefore, there will be a resultant vector pointing this way. Let's put a circle over here to represent that. So we get a little clearer picture of that. So there will be a force pointing in this way. Okay, that's keeping her going in a circle. And she will feel the normal force going up this way of 441. Newtons and 56 this way. So the resultant vector will be pointing in this direction. And uh, here's our angle theta. So we'll say the force of the girl this time will be the Pythagorized equation there. So under the square root, 
So I have 56 squared plus 441 squared. And of course, acting in the girl, we're going to equal 445 newtons. Now, what's our angle theta? Well, we'll take the uh, tangent of theta is equal to the uh, y over x, so 441 over 56. And we get an angle of 83 degrees.